Hello and welcome to Mastering Quantum Mechanics Through Problems. In this video, I'm going to solve a quantum mechanics problem involving neutrino oscillations, using it as an example to apply the postulates of quantum mechanics. While it's not the easiest example to start with, neutrino oscillation is an interesting phenomenon. I'll be posting several other problems to help you fully grasp the concept behind the postulates of quantum mechanics. On this slide, I'll briefly talk about beta decay and the discovery of the neutrino. In beta decay, a neutron transforms into a proton, this is called beta minus decay, or a proton transforms into a neutron, beta plus decay, changing the atomic nucleus. The image shows an example of beta minus decay, where a neutron in a carbon-14 nucleus turns into a proton, leading into the formation of a more stable nitrogen-14 nucleus. This is carbon-14, one of the neutrons turns into a proton, and you get a more stable nucleus. In the 1920s and 1930s, scientists observed that the energy of emitted electrons in the beta decay didn't match the expected values. There was some missing energy. Enrico Fermi suggested that there was an elusive particle that was difficult to detect. He called it the neutrino, and this particle has since been detected. On this slide, I have the postulates of quantum mechanics. Oh my! These postulates are the rules discovered through experiment and theory that allow us to solve quantum mechanics problems and predict how quantum systems behave. However, just hearing these rules isn't enough to fully grasp them if you're encountering them for the first time. So I'm going to explain them by walking you through an example involving neutrino oscillation. I'll read the postulates now. The state postulate. A quantum system's state is a vector psi. Psi is an element of a complex Hilbert space. The observable postulate. Observables are represented by Hermitian operators, for example, a hat, where the eigenvectors correspond to measurable quantities. The measurement postulate. The probability of measuring an eigenvalue a n for an observable a is given by the inner product of the vector a with a state vector psi and the absolute value squared. The time evolution postulate. The state psi of t evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. To get the time evolution, you multiply each eigenvector by the phase factor e to the minus i e n t over h bar. And then there's the composite system postulate. We're not going to need this one in the neutrino oscillation problem. So here's the problem setup. When a neutrino is produced, it is not in an eigenstate of mass. No way. Instead, it exists in a superposition of mass eigenstates m1 and m2, which evolve over time, leading to the phenomenon known as neutrino oscillation. The electron and muon neutrinos can be expressed as linear combination of mass eigenstates. This is the mixing matrix, and this is just presented to you. The electron neutrino is some linear combination of masses, and the muon neutrino is a linear combination of masses. It's in a superposition of two masses. This question is going to be discussing this example. Assume that at t equals zero, a muon neutrino is produced through the decay of a pion into a muon and a muon neutrino. You start with a pion and it decays into a muon and a muon neutrino. The muon neutrino has a much, much smaller mass than the muon, about 1% or less. At t equals zero, it starts out in the flavor state of the muon neutrino. Here's the question. It's a four-part question, and I'll solve it on the next slides. Part A, express the initial state of the system in terms of the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. Part B, obtain the state of the system psi of t as a function of time. Part C, compute the neutrino oscillation probability, the probability of detecting the electron neutrino as a function of time. Part D, compute the neutrino survival probability, that's the probability of detecting the muon neutrino as a function of time. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Part A says, express the initial state of the system in terms of eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. That's in terms of the mass eigenstates. We know that initially the neutrino is a muon neutrino. So at time t equals zero, the initial state of the system is given by this mixing matrix and it's negative sine theta of mass one plus cosine theta of mass two. And this is an example of the state postulate. A quantum system state is a vector psi. The neutrino is in a state vector and that state vector is a linear combination of two masses. In neutrino oscillations, the neutrinos are produced and detected in flavor eigenstates, for example, the electron neutrino or the muon neutrino. But they propagate a superposition of mass eigenstates. The mixing angle theta governs how the flavor states are related to the mass eigenstates. Part B says, obtain the state of the system psi of t as a function of time. This is an example of the time evolution postulate. We know the state of the system at t equals zero, which was negative sine theta times m1 plus cosine of theta times m2. In order to get psi of t, the time evolution postulate tells us that we multiply each eigenvector by the phase factor e to the minus i e n t by h bar. So in this case, 
psi of t is equal to this eigenvector multiplied by e to the minus e1 t by h bar, and this eigenvector multiplied by e to the minus i e2 t by h bar, where e1 is related to mass 1 and e2 is related to mass 2. So this is the answer. This tells us how the wave function evolves with time if we know the wave function at time t equals 0. Before we proceed to part c, there's a mathematical trick that we can do. You can do this in almost any two-state system. For this problem, what we can do is we can say the energy e is equal to e1 plus e2, and the energy little e is equal to e1 minus e2, and therefore we can write e1 as one half big E plus little e, and e2 as one half big E minus little e, and then we'll take these and plug them in for e1 and e2, and what that allows us to do is to factor out an overall phase, and then we have psi of t as this overall phase times negative sine of theta e to the negative i little e t by 2h bar times the eigenstate m1 plus cosine of theta e to the i little e t by 2h bar times the eigenstate m2, so there's a minus here and a plus here, and these have the same magnitude. We can write psi of t as just this part because the overall phase doesn't change the physics. This is the final answer, psi of t, the wave function as a function of time, and this is an example of how you apply the time evolution postulate. Part C is an example of the measurement postulate. Part C says compute the neutrino oscillation probability the probability of detecting the electron neutrino as a function of time. So the neutrino starts out as a muon neutrino, but as time evolves, it's going to change into an electron neutrino, and it's going to oscillate back and forth between an electron and a muon neutrino. So if we want to find the probability of measuring the electron neutrino, what we do, we take the inner product between what we want to measure, which is the electron neutrino, and the wave function, and then we take that and we square it. That's what the measurement postulate tells us. It says that the probability of measuring an eigen value a n for an observable a is given by the inner product of a n with psi squared. So in this case, we want to take the inner product of what we want to measure, which is the electron neutrino, with the wave function and then square it. We know that the state of the electron neutrino is given by cosine of theta m1 plus sine of theta m2, and then we take the inner product of this state with the wave function that we got from the previous part. When we take the inner product, m1 and m1 is 1, m1 and m2 is 0, m2 and m1 is 0, m2 and m2 is 1, and so that tells us that the amplitude of measuring the electron neutrino is given by negative sine of theta times cosine of theta times this phase factor plus cosine of theta times sine of theta times this phase factor. We can factor out a sine of theta and cosine of theta. This term is just equal to 2i sine of the phase factor, et over 2h bar, and so the probability of measuring the electron neutrino as a function of time is just this squared. And so that's going to be this squared, and that's the answer for part c. Part d says find the probability of time that you're going to measure the muon neutrino. The muon neutrino is the state that it starts with. You can go through the math. This is exactly the same procedure. Now you use the state of the muon neutrino, not the electron neutrino. And when you do that, you can follow the math. And what you get is the probability is equal to cosine squared of omega t plus cosine squared of 2 theta times sine squared of omega t. This is the probability of measuring the muon neutrino as a function of time. So in summary, the neutrino's flavor state, for example, an electron neutrino, a muon neutrino, or a tau neutrino, is a quantum superposition of different mass states. As neutrinos travel, their mass states propagate differently, causing flavor oscillations, where it changes from one flavor to another. This behavior is similar to a spin one-half particle in a magnetic field. Neutrino oscillations arise due to the mixing of mass and flavor states. Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.